Hey everyone, Andrew here from 8-Bit Buck. And Professor K of the Pokemon Evolutionaries. And as always, we are doing our uh, set review. Um, when a new set comes out, this time we're a little bit late, but we, we're busy. We're busy guys. We eh? stuff we're stuff going on. We're walking here. <laughs> so, um, but uh, yeah, so this time we're doing it on uh, Red Flash and uh, Blue Impact or Blue Shock, whatever you want to call it. I prefer Impact because, you know, fighting type Mewtwo. Mega Me Too. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, but it's going to be breakthrough in English for us, so, um, you know, we're gonna just talk about it. Indeed, we're looking at a lot of cards in between the two sets and the two break decks, Raichu and Noivern, so we've got a large amount of things to cover for you guys. We're just gonna talk about what's competitive, what has some potential, what's interesting, what's fun, and, you know, we'll show you guys the artwork on the cards. Yeah, and, uh, just uh, not talk about the artwork nearly as much as what we usually do. Yeah, I mean, the artwork this time around, it was good, but it wasn't as impressive as a step up like how Ancient Origins was. So it's not worth being like, oh, wow, look how amazing this is. So, um, yeah, so that's what we're going to be doing. Same thing as usual. Um, so you might want to grab a soda pop and get some yourself a snack. Yeah, because uh, if you came in here thinking this was going to be a 15-minute video, you were wrong. Indeed. Even if we talked about each competitive card and just talked about each competitive card, we're still looking at a 45-minute video. So definitely sit in for the long haul, guys, because we've got a lot to talk about. Mm-hmm. So why don't you kick things off, uh, Professor? Alrighty, well, let's take a look at the first card here. It's not really all that important. It's just a Paris, but it's been a long time since he's been around, and he's yeah. been so long, in fact, that he's just a little hungry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> six, uh, <laughs> six, seven, eight, or nine years. For some reason, I want to say nine, but it feels too long to be nine. But uh, shout-out to Hashime Kusajima. Uh, so anyways, we're going to be talking about Parasect, though. He's actually very interesting. Uh, not only that he's in this like alien-like laboratory, but uh, the attack Colorful Spore. For one colorless, uh, you get to choose three of your Pokemon, search your deck for three different types of basic energy, and attach one to each of the Pokemon you choose, shuffle your deck afterwards. Now, this is interesting because it could work with uh, the Huntel uh, Ho-Oh EX deck that's uh, an expanded. Uh, Ho-Oh EX obviously has the one attack. I don't remember exactly what it is, but for it's, each... It's actually an ability. It's Rebirth. Um, if Ho-Oh is in your discard pile, you may flip a coin. If it's heads, you can bring it back onto the bench with, I think it's two or three basic energy to attack to it. I think it's it. three. I think but, it's three. Um, but the uh, attack for it, though, has the, um, like, uh, for each different type of energy... Uh, type of energy that you have for it doesn't it do more damage it does but the idea is to use hunt hill more than anything powerful storm yeah. one water energy does 20 damage times the number of energy you have in play so the more energy you have the more damage you're going to do and yeah. parasect and ho-oh both have the potential to bring in a lot of energy and really power up that deck super fast yeah for uh only one colorless to uh get three energy out into play and with the power of giant plant forest um, I'm not sure how it would necessarily fit into one of those decks, but I'm sure people would definitely make it work. Um, well, it's Manta. potential just to run it in standard with just Parasect and just Huntail. Right, so definitely, definitely worth talking about. Um, and uh, I think it could see some play in the future. That's possible, definitely possible. All right, so let's move it along here, and we'll just take a look at this cute Chespin picking fruit off a tree. Those yep. would be berries. Yeah, berries, whatever. We got a Quilladin as well, walking through the park by the looks of it. Yeah, he's got that neat uh, South Park artwork to him. He does, you're right. All he would need is just like a big jacket or something. Well, he kind of has a big jacket. <laughs> or if he was like Canadian, just a floppy head. <laughs> Get the bobblehead Quilladin going on over there. All <laughs> right, so let's move on to the card we're going to talk about and actually discuss a little bit, and that is the Chestnut. It has two attacks. It has Horn Piercing Lariat for a grass, and two colorless energy does 60 damage damage, and if your opponent's active Pokemon has any damage counters on it, it does 60 more damage. So it has the potential to do up to 120 damage if you have some damage on it already. Uh, of course, getting stage 2 Pokemon out is never easy, but there is Giant Plant Forest, and he also has Eternal Press, 2 Grass Energy, 2 Colorless Energy, 100 damage, and during your opponent's next turn, damage done to this Pokemon by your opponent's Pokemon attacks is reduced by 20. Yeah, not the greatest, but uh, one thing to note uh, for the future in this set review is uh, his retreat cost is 4, and there might be an easier way to get someone that's hefty like him. Indeed, indeed. So that is Chestnut, and I'll just say Chestnut Break here real quick. 
Uh, of mm-hmm. course, gets a boost in HP, goes from 160 to 190, and it retains all attacks, abilities, weakness, resistance, and retreat costs, so every, you can still use everything that's on Chestnut, and you're probably going to want to, because right. Horn Piercing Lariat is a much better attack than Tough Hammer for 2 Grass and 2 Colorless. 160 damage does 30 to the actual Pokemon itself, and it does 30 damage to all of your opponent's benched Pokemon. So, I mean, in some instances... I mean, I, I don't think he's that bad. It's definitely a very hefty cost, and being a stage 3, basically. But with the combination of Giant Plan Force, if you did have all the right tools, you can get him out right away. It's just the hefty retreat... Uh, not retreat. Um, the hefty uh, energy cost. Uh, two grass and two colorless. But double colorless is a thing, so really only three attachments to do 160 damage. Yeah, it would do 30 to itself, but obviously there's a way around that, like... Um, uh, what is it? Uh, protection cube. Or if you don't even care about 30 damage on 190 HP Pokemon, you could even attach a uh, uh, muscle band to add insultant to injury to do 180 damage. That's knocking out most basic EXs um, besides Whale Lord. And then 30 to everyone. I think that's pretty powerful. It's just the fact that he is a stage 3 and has hefty uh, cost for yeah. attack. But. Um, and you def- could, well, you could also use Tough Hammer one time to spread the damage and then just keep using Horn Pierce and Lariat over and over for 120. Yeah, there's definitely the synergy uh, there. Um, and uh, you don't have to necessarily uh, even use that test knot. Obviously, you would. But you could uh, use it with uh, the XY uh, base set one that has the uh, one ability. I think it's like if you get a damage by attacks, yeah, you do like 30 damage to them. So that's uh, another option that you do have. Indeed, that is very true. All right, so next up we just have this Skiddo, uh, just being a Skiddo, uh, and a Go-Goat um, that uh, I haven't even really seen too much. Uh, I mean, like, I've seen him once or twice, but he, he just kind of, like, appeared. And uh, This is my opportunity to say shout-out to Go-Go-Go-Goat. <laughs> Go-Go-Go-Goat. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to you, buddy. Um, Something I said in the comments section, by the way, of, of uh, Birdkeeper Tober's vi- Birdkeeper Toby. Oh my God, Tober, Tober. <laughs> in his video, um, he was talking about Go Goat, and I just happened to think of this, and I think it's hilarious. Imagine if Inspector Gadget owned a Go Goat. Go 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 Go. <laughs> uh, I love. <laughs> oh God, that's great. It's it, it really is. Go 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 Go. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, I'm going to be uh, talking about these next two Pokemon because I do have a sentimental uh, attachment to these guys. We've got Houndoom EX with uh, the first attack for uh, Fire Energy. Melt Horn, discard the top two cards of your opponent's deck. Uh, nice mill there, but not really. Uh, but then we have Grand F Dane. <laughs> I- I'm sorry. <laughs> it's uh, Grand Flame. Oh, cry on right now. <laughs> cry on shout out to randy and team booster break uh we got 50 damage uh for two uh fire energy uh attach a fire energy card from your discard pile to one of your bench pokemon not the best of attacks but um artwork's fantastic i love houndoom so much and uh then we're just going to be moving on to Mega Houndoom. Now, this guy is a beast. First of all, not only is this uh, artwork very uh, brilliant, and sorry about seeing that Skype thing. Uh, Professor K got a little quiet, so I was making sure you're still in call. Of course uh, here. Yeah, it, your mic got really quiet. Anyway, so uh, 210 HP. Um, and uh, he has Inferno Fang for 2 fire energy, 80 plus damage. You may discard all fire energy attached to this Pokemon. If you do, it does 80 more damage. Now you may be thinking, Andrew, come on, why would I want to use this? I'm discarding all my energy here. Well, you know, you do have Blacksmith, but there is something else in this set that can help him out a lot. Indeed. Hmm. I wonder and, uh... I wonder so. Um, and uh, one thing to note too is his little uh, explosion thing is the only Mega Pokemon to actually use green. Uh, all Mega Pokemon previously have used uh, light blue, purple, and yellow. Oh, I didn't notice that. Very interesting. Yep. Uh, but the uh, card's okay. wonderful. Love it. Okay. Hmm. Mega Charizard used gold, didn't it? Uh, yeah, it used yellow. Ye- yellow, I believe. Yeah. Okay. That's why. Okay, well, let's see here. I guess we'll have to talk about the monkey. Ugh. All right, so first we got this pants here. That's a pants here. Mm-hmm. Ugh. 
semi seer. Yeah. And we got the flamboyant semi seer. Oh jeez. All right. So, um, water toss. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That because that makes sense. Put three water energy from your discard pile into your hand. Yeah. Okay. And then hand <laughs> hand ten times. It's got some synergy with that attack. It yeah. does ten damage times the number of cards in your hand. So and if I mean, you're just constantly putting energy in your hand, but I mean. <sighs> No. Let's just uh, let's say it's the most playable of any monkey that's ever been printed. But uh, that's the best way of putting it. Yeah, <laughs> that does not by any means make it a good card ever. I I even made a small joke saying, uh, "What if they made uh, um, hollow monkey cards?" I think everyone hated me for that. <laughs> or how about if they make EXs? Oh God! Please. Okay, so Goldine. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's a Goldeen. It's a Goldeen. And, of course, we get Seeking here as well, which, by the way, Water Pokemon Master on Poke Beach likes to try to be funny. Evolves from Goldfish Cracker. Yeah. I, I don't think it's Goldfish Cracker. I don't either. It doesn't look like I, I don't remember Goldfish Cracker, Mon. Nope, I don't either. So we're talking about this card for one reason and one reason only, because oh, I, Seeking is usually complete garbage. Mm -hmm. However, it has an interesting possibility here. That mm -hmm. Wet Horn attack does 10 damage plus 80 more if it's if it was healed during this turn. And right. the interesting thing about it is that we have rough seas for water type Pokemon being able to heal 30 damage in between turn or on your turn I should say. And granted you have 90 HP, chances are you're probably knocked out. But sometimes you won't and you'll be able to heal. If you do, you can do 90 damage. Now you could also pair this with evolutions like Jolteon or Flareon and you could start hitting things for weakness doing mm -hmm. 180 damage so the idea is kind of there the synergistic properties are in place but it does take a lot to get going and it's not going to work most of the time right and uh, i mean even if you want to add just a little bit more damage you got muscle band of course uh but uh, it's not going to work that much but the possibility is there for a one energy attack on a stage one uh, from healing and that's not something to just uh not take a look at uh, so to speak. Indeed. So uh, next up, we've got uh, Star U. Um, artwork was just really different from everything else uh, in this. Uh, I think it has the most different artwork from everyone else. It does. It gives you like a weird perspective of like underwater and above water. Yeah. Uh, it, it looks really odd. But uh, then next up, we have Star Me. Star uh, yes, indeed. Star, Star Me looks really cool. It kind of looks like a beacon. It does. It's it's it is pretty cool. I wish it was a psychic type again, but oh well. I'll yeah. deal with the water type. However, it does have an interesting attack. Um, if you wanted to waste your attack for this purpose, you can use Deep Sea Swirl. Shuffle your hand into your deck and draw seven cards. Basically, uh, Professor Oak's new theory. Uh, shout out to Jay Wits. You got your uh, you got your reprint of that just in the form of an attack on a stage one Pokemon. Yep, <laughs> indeed. But uh, yeah, it's that, definitely uh, worth noting. It's uh, not horrible, but I don't oh, see it ever being used. But, I just realized um, Water Pokemon Master is trying to be funny again with Even Bond. If you and your opponent have the same number of bench Pokemon, your act opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed because now we're even, sucker. Oh, jeez. Let, uh, let's just move on. Yes. I'm sick of these terrible jokes. Sorry, Water Pokemon Master, but uh, it's just not my niche right there. So, uh, anyways, we've got uh, this Remoraid with an uh, interesting attack name, uh, Ion Pool. That is Dis interesting. Discard any stadium card in play. Okay. So, yeah. Paint Roar in attack form. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, we got Piplup. I love Piplup. One of my favorite starters. Hey. I love penguins. Penguins are my favorite real-life animal. Love Piplup. So much. Uh, being that I like penguins, can I talk about... Keep going, people? keep going. Uh, okay, okay, okay. All the so, way to Apollyon. Uh, we got uh, Primplup. Uh, Primplup. Uh, I was never a big fan of Primplup, even though he is a penguin. But I do like him. Uh, nothing to talk about. And uh, like Impole. penguin teenager. Mm-hmm. But all of the stage uh, ones for uh, starter Pokemon are those awkward teen phase. Indeed. So we got this Empoleon, uh, 140 HP, with the ability Noble Power. As long as this Pokemon is in play, your basic Pokemon's attacks do 20 more damage. And this does stack. So, basic Pokemon, Pokemon EX, can mm. do 20 more damage. It stacks. You can combine it with... Uh, Archie, if you were able to pull off more than one of this, uh, these uh, Pokemon, you could stack 40, 60, 80 more damage 
onto any of your basic Pokemon. Oh gosh, not Seismitoad EX. <sighs> Jeez, oh god. Yeah, I thought the Toad was dead after Verbank was gone, but I don't know. We might be seeing the return. Well, Toad is already making a return in the Giratina decks, so... Oh yeah, that's right. I've been seeing Verbank posting about that, yes. unfortunately. So, uh, there you go but, again. but it is good. It's good for everything else too. So I still think Toad has a shot at getting shut down. Well, we can escape it. Hopefully. All right. So I'll cover us down to Magnazone here. Um, I'm gonna start with Snover because it's Snover. Uh, looks like crayon drawing. Yeah, it does. It looks like maybe it was done by. I don't know, maybe I'll say an elementary school age student that can mm -hmm. draw really well. But I yeah. like it though, it's different. And we also have Obama Snow, which is an entirely different style. We have the president Pokemon, Obama Snow. <laughs> oh gosh. Don't oh, you hate no. me? Oh, you have no you idea. You love to hate me. You have no idea. So, anyways, we're going to move on here to Magnemite, which I actually kind of like this Magnemite. I think it looks pretty cool. Yeah, I like the other Magmite more, but uh, that's in a different set because uh, Pokemon was weird this time around. Yeah, we're currently in Red Flash, so we gotta wait till we get to Blue Shock. I like to call it Blue Shock better, so that's yeah. just me. Alright, Magneton here. Magneton, actually, that's another one that I like. Yeah, the artwork's fantastic on it. The yes. colors are just interesting. It looks like a giant acid trip. <laughs> it really does, yeah. But it, it's fantastic looking. Back when, um, remember when Magneton was a uh, the last uh, evolution for this uh, mm -hmm. line? Yep. They, they had hollows of it. They did. You're right. Okay, well, finally, we're looking at the most important Pokemon in the line, and I just clicked out of it accidentally. <laughs> Oops, my bad. We've got the Magnezone here, and it has a very cool ability, Magnet Circuit, as long as this, as long as you'd like during your turn. You may as attach, as yeah, obviously, <laughs> before you attack, you may attach a Lightning Energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. Now, the only thing that this card needs is, like, Lieutenant Surge's something or another. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> to go along with Archie and Lieutenant Maxi. Surge's hidden circuits. Indeed, that would be amazing because then you could bring this card out, put it on the bench, and start doing just like Blastoise for any Pokemon you want to use a, a lightning energy for. For instance, there's one coming up in the set. Actually, it's the very next card that would make great use of Magne Magnezone. Mm -hmm. And that would be Raikou, uh, probably my favorite of the three legendary beasts. He has the ability Shining Body. If there's any lightning uh, energy attached to this Pokemon, any damage done to it is reduced by 20. Um, I'm pretty sure that doesn't stack, because if you just put a bunch of lightning energy upon him, that would be horrible. But uh, he has Thunderlands for three colorless, 50 plus damage, uh, and it does 20 more damage for each lightning energy attached to this Pokemon. So it's a non-EX Caldeo. 120 HP is very, very um, good for just a basic Pokemon. Uh, it only has one retreat cost, which isn't bad at all. And uh, you get to do a lot of damage. The only thing it doesn't like have that works well with it is uh, it can't rush in or anything but uh, that's not really needed I think you know I just don't think it's needed and uh, I think it's pretty fantastic indeed I think it is too very very good all right well I'll let you cover the next two all right uh, well we've got Mewtwo EX the better of the Mewtwo EXs from these two sets uh, we have Blast Ball 30 uh, for psychic uh, 30 times damage does 30 damage times the number of psychic energy attached to this Pokemon not too bad um, and then we have Damage Exchange, uh, which is pretty cool for two Psychic and a Colorless. Switch the number of damage counters on this Pokemon with your opponent's active Pokemon. Uh, weak to Psychic, um, so, I mean, you might see Mewtwo Wars with this, but probably not, because you have to, you know, attach them energies, though. But, um... Here we have Mega Mewtwo Y EX, basically, even though just on the card it just says, oh, I got rid of it, dang it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mega Mewtwo EX, uh, 210 HP, so a little bit lower, but it has the attack Psychic Infinity. Uh, 10 plus damage does 10 damage plus 30 more for each energy attached to each player's Pokemon, uh, or both uh, players' active Pokemon. Uh, but here's the kicker. This attack's damage is not affected by weakness, so no Mega Mewtwo Wars. But there is an interesting idea that could be done and expanded, and that oh. would be to use the... Um, oh my gosh, which Pokemon was it now? Gardevoir. The Gardevoir that multiplies the psychic energy. Each one counts as two. Oh, that's right. That would be interesting. It would be. 
And I mean, this is essentially like, you know, when you see the 10 plus damage, you're thinking, hey, you know, that's not amazing. But when it's doing 30 more for each energy attached to both, it's slightly more broken than, um, especially because it's 10 plus, whereas X-Ball Me 2 was 20 times. Exactly. This is 10 plus 30 more damage. So slightly more broken, but it's a Mega Evolution Pokemon. So, you know, you have to, you know, wait one turn, I guess. But yeah. I mean, well, not, not really a big deal when you're destroying the competition with this yeah. thing. The old, but you're not hitting for weakness. No, you're not. The old Mewtwo's base damage was 40. And in this, the base damage is actually 70. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. Yes, indeed. Uh, pretty disgusting. It really is. Of course, they show disgusting love to the favorite of the Mega Mewtwo's. Especially considering that there are actually 10 different kinds of Mewtwo cards between these sets. It's absolutely <sighs> gross. Yeah, it is. Yeah, they, they wanted to focus it so hard on Mewtwo that they forgot uh, one feature in one of the cards. We'll they be, did. We'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, at the very end of this review, so stay tuned for that. Exactly. So, um, I Let's guess move you... on here. Yeah, I've got Mischievous here. Um, it's a Mischievous. Yep. And nothing special about it. And we've got Miss Magius here. Um, cool looking hollow. I'll give it that. Yeah, very colorful. Very colorful. The ability Twisted Spell once during your turn before you attack, you may play this card from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon. You may use this ability. Uh, your opponent shuffles his or her hand into his or her deck and draws cards equal to the number of his or her remaining prize cards, essentially turning it into an ability-based stage 1N just for your opponent. Yeah. So... In the beginning of the game, it wouldn't be good at all. End of the game, probably. But, I mean, in, in so you would have to wait to evolve. Yeah. Like, you know, it would be better if, like, you know, Mischievous had that. But for a stage one, it's just weird. It is. It's it's really not much use at all. It, it, it It's turning itself into, like, a filler hollow card. That's what it does. Yeah. But, I mean, it's a beautiful one. So it is. It looks it good. Out. So, uh, I guess uh, right here we can go back and forth. We got this Ralts, uh, very uh, cute Ralts with that little uh, character. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's Ralts. It's Ralts. And it's got a, hey, it's a Poke Block. Haha. <laughs> well, it is a Poke Block, isn't it? Kind of. <laughs> well, anyway, so we got this uh, Curlia at a dance party <laughs> with uh, Mr. Mime and Starmie. DDR Curlia. <laughs> <laughs> oh god uh, wait did a uh, water pokemon master write that and no the, the attack oh okay no I, I said it <laughs> oh okay i was just making sure it's my bad joke <laughs> okay um so yeah nothing uh nothing to really talk about it i mean yeah it has invitation put a supporter card from your discard pile into your hand but i mean fear seeker though yeah it's got so. its own cheer squad though mr mime and starmie are you know pumping them up yeah, I never expected to see Starmina dance club. No, me neither. Mr. Mime I can see, but eh, not yeah. Starmie. <laughs> so, uh, all right, so, want to cover this next one? Sure, why not? Let's go with Cresselia. It has an ability called My Way. If there's a stadium card in play, this Pokemon's retreat is zero, but, I mean, it's the same as Hydreigon's ability, essentially. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, whatever. And well, that, it's saying this Pokemon, Hydreigon, at least... Uh, give it other Pokemon. Yeah. yeah but It uh, gives it two less retreat. Cresselia, uh, yeah, a Psychic and a two colorless energy. Moonlight Gain does 70 damage and heals 20 from this Pokemon. Just, there's no reason to use it. There's nothing good about it. They have yet to print a good Cresselia card in the TCG in since before Black and White, basically. Mm -hmm. So, poor Cresselia. R.I.P. Indeed. Well, I know you want to cover the next three, so I'll let you do that. All right, so we've got Cubone here. Now, originally I thought this Cubone had an attack that uh, did more damage for each Marowak in the discard pile, but I think that's a different Cubone. Uh, as you can see from the attack, it uh, if Tails, uh, the attack does nothing and you go cry home to your mommy. But uh, Cubone doesn't have uh, mommy and water Pokemon Master, so that's not cool, bro. It's really not. That that's You don't <laughs> kick a Cubone when he's down. Yeah, and the thing is, look, he's sad because look at this mom and child in the background having fun. And Cubone's just like, yeah, I wish I could have fun at this amusement park, but, you know, my mom's dead. Yeah, I'm just all gonna, the time. I'm just going to play with her skull on my head. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, Marowak, because uh, the reason I wanted to talk about these guys is because they don't get that much love in the TCG, and this was a nice turn of 
events for him. Uh, so uh, it has a snipe. Uh, choose one of your opponent's Pokemon. Does 30 damage to that. It's okay. Fighting energy. Uh, but then Bone Windmill does 60 damage. And if your opponent's active Pokemon, it's a Pokemon EX. Which this Pokemon with one of your benched Pokemon has one retreat cost. But then we have my favorite break oh, of all of the breaks. One other thing that's important to point out here. I don't know if you noticed this or not in the Marowak card. Uh, mm. Look up in the glare at the top. Oh, yep. Uh, Mega Mewtwo is up there, isn't he? Indeed. Uh, yeah, I remember seeing that, not seeing that. I saw someone comment about that, and I was just like, oh, yeah, and I forgot about it instantly. The fun little Easter eggs they throw on these artworks sometimes. Yeah, it, it is pretty nice. I do enjoy it. Um, but my favorite break from this set is Marowak. Oh, actually, from all the sets, to be honest. Uh, Marowak break, 140 HP, so very uh, decent uh HP size, and it's fighting type, so that's great. Um, as said before, uh, break cards retain the attacks, abilities, weakness, resistance, and retreat cost of its previous evolutions. Bone Revenge for a fighting in a color list does 20 plus damage. This attack does 40 more damage for each prize card your opponent has taken. So, combine that with some strong energy, some muscle bands, some stadiums that are of the fighting variety. Uh, you can knock out most uh, Pokemon EX if your opponent has taken two prize cards, and I think every Pokemon EX if they've taken three. It's pretty good. That so, pretty good. Um, it, you know, it is a little risky to have your opponent take uh, prize cards before you do serious damage, but the thing is, if you're knocking out Pokemon EX, you're going to do it real quick. With 140 HP, it's not going to be easy to take him down either. Yeah, I mean, you have some ways to control your your the amount of prizes your opponent takes. You could, in Expanded, use Kafagrigus. You could also use Milotic. Yep, either way. Use, yeah, you can just uh, get the Milo, uh, Milotic on and discard him right away. And that gives you uh, energy, right? Yep, energy grace. That yep. is true. So, um, yeah, you could definitely uh, see some... Uh, use there uh, i definitely think he could be maybe not tier one but definitely uh tier two mm, potentially potentially it's pretty cool i mean i do like the i like the attack it's something different mm -hmm. all right so we're gonna move on here we've got a swine up that's blending in with a bunch of pillows i think Those uh, pillows. Or, or sushi or sushi actually yeah it might be sushi or huh? gummy bears i don't know hard to say but he's still cute mm -hmm. and we got pile of swine too um He's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's kind of... The, the second attack is kind of interesting. Uh, Footprints of the Herd, 30 damage, 30 plus damage. This attack does 30 damage plus 10 more for each colorless in the retreat cost of your Swinub, Pyloswine, and Mamoswine in play. So it could add up considering that Mamoswine has a, a 4 retreat cost. Right. And since it's fighting type, you can combine, uh, combine it with uh, Maxi's hidden ball trick. So essentially, you could have, um, I mean, if you were able to pull it off, which is ridiculous, but we're, we're just talking hypothetically. You could have four Mamoswine just sitting on the bench, so four, uh, 16, so that would be 160 extra damage if you just had Mamoswine. Yeah, then plus 30 is 190. That's, mm -hmm. uh, that's a lot. That is a lot of damage. Oh yeah. Of, speaking of Mammoth Swine here, we've got an ability that's not anything new. Thick Fat, uh, any damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from your opponent's fire or water Pokemon is reduced by 30 after applying weakness and resistance. And it has the attack Primeval Roar for a fighting and three colorless, 80 damage plus. If you have a stadium card in play, it does 40 more damage. And if your opponent has a stadium card in play, this Pokemon heals 40 damage. So not really good. No. I, I would honestly say the pillow swine is better. It is. It is. But, uh, hey, mammal swine. Neat looking hollow, though. Yeah. I do enjoy me a mammal swine. And now we get to a really good card. Gallade. Uh, I almost said EX for some reason. Gallade. Uh, ability. Premonition. Once during your turn before your attack, you may look at the top five cards of your deck and put them on top of your deck in any order. That's pretty good for knowing what you're going to pull. Um, and just seeing what you can pull from the top five. Because if you see that, then you could know whether or not you want to do something along the lines of having to shuffle your deck so you can get, uh, you know, different uh, stuff potentially. But then his attack is really good too for two colorless sensing blade. 60 plus damage. If you play to supporter from your hand this turn, this attack does 70 more damage. 
in most cases, you're going to play a supporter on your turn, so... And because it's fighting type, it has access to strong energy and fighting stadium as well to multiply, or I shouldn't say multiply, but to add to that damage output. Yeah, and I mean, it's already doing 130, like, base damage, basically. I mean, 60 is technically the base, but if you're playing a supporter, it's base. So, 130 damage there. And you know. access to maxi. Mm-hmm. So, it's really, really good. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm sure uh, Vince is happy with this card. Indeed. 150 HP, too, is pretty high for Gallade, I think. It is, because usually so. it's a little more fragile than that. Yeah, so definitely an excellent card. Uh, All right. Next up, we got this Zorua. Just cool. Zorua. Yep, just Zora. Mm hmm Cute, though. Oh, yeah. And we got an Evil Tall up next. This card I'm actually a bit more excited for, I think, than even you are, but that's just yeah. me. Um, first of all, it looks awesome. Oh yeah, it definitely does. I love Eveltal. To be fair, I'm slightly biased because Eveltal is like my third favorite Pokemon, so I mm. can't deny that. Uh, okay. His ability Fright Knight is basically a Banette, uh, but you have to be in the active position, uh, and mm. all Pokemon tools have no effect. So you can't attach, like we were talking about earlier, you can't attach a Muscle Band to it and do anything, and it has to be active, so it's like, uh, it's... It's, it's hard to say if it's really going to be any good for that ability, but the attack is kind of cool. You got Jet Black Spear, 60 damage, and then you can choose one of your opponent's bo uh, bench Pokemon EX and do 60 damage to it as well. So mm. it's kind of like Darkrai's Night Spear, just doing a little bit less damage to the active and more damage to the bench. But it's a non-EX Pokemon, so it's definitely a little bit uh, more safe yeah. than and that. And 130 HP on a basic is as high as you can go, basically, so... <laughs> It's mm -hmm. very, very hard to knock out with one hit. Has there ever been a basic above uh, 130? I don't know. I, I, I feel so. like there hasn't. So, but Stage uh, 1, the only one that's ever been for Stage 1 even is Waylord. That had 200. Yeah. So, so hmm. Well, uh, moving on, we've got uh, Bronzor. He's a Bronzor. Uh, looks weird. I have no idea what kind of setting he's in, but... Uh, like in the space shuttle or something. <laughs> he looks kind of shocked about it, but I feel like Bronzor <laughs> always does. He does. And then uh, we got Bronzong. Uh, interesting. Uh, first of all, the artwork's super cool. Uh, two colorless paint amp uh, amplifier. Uh, put three damage counters on each of your uh, opponent's Pokemon that already has damage counters on it. I mean, I, I think that's kind of cool. It's unique. Yeah, so... And I know you're probably going to want to talk about this guy right here. Welcome back to competitive play, Mr. Mime. This is this is a welcome addition for a lot of players and also the nightmare of others. Uh, Mr. Mime brings back the bench barrier ability and you get to prevent all damage done to your bench Pokemon by attacks. The only difference is, is that this Mr. Mime has less HP and it's a fairy type instead of a psychic type and the attack is completely useless as opposed to the other one that actually could be used in an emergency situation yeah but this could never be used ever no. so unfortunately but hey bench barrier is back so that's all that really matters yeah and now you've got a metal week uh mr mime instead of a psychic week yeah so that's a little bit more helpful but uh you know it's uh it's just nerfed in some aspects basically so yeah. um next up we've got uh spritzy and it's Evolution Aromatise, which is very, very cool in my opinion. It has the attack Heavy Perfume uh, for one Fairy Energy. Your opponent's active Pokemon is confused. When your opponent's active Pokemon hits itself in confusion, put six damage counters on that Pokemon instead of three. So um, obviously this can be gotten around by using Switch, um, but that would automatically cancel out confusion anyways. So... Uh, it's definitely interesting, but you could pair it with another Pokemon from this set to basically uh, do attacks for free. Mm. Of course, you're able to use that Malamar. Oh, yep, the uh, promo Malamar that uh, allows you to treat all uh, coin flips as tails if it's in the active spot. So, uh, some synergy there, I think. There is, because then it's going to hit itself in confusion as soon as it goes for attack, since it has to treat all coin flips as tails. Uh, your opponent can choose not to attack. So that's kind of a hitch in the plan, but... Yeah, but Malamar can still attack, though. I mean, it's not the highest of uh, damage, but you can still get that damage out there, and they're going to want to try and do something. Indeed. All right, so we got Axew here. Axew is just an Axew. Uh, of course, it's still the typical fighting and steel-type attacks uh, for the Dragon-type Pokemon that we're used to. I mean, it's ridiculous that he's a basic of a Stage 2 Pokemon, and he has a 3-energy attack. 
Yeah, that it's is gonna be really ridiculous. ridiculous. It, it is. It is bad. We've got a Doe Duo here. It's just a Doe Duo. I think it's kind of funny that there's a truck with a Doe do Drio in the background. And it's kind of funny. Actually, no. Uh, here's one thing that's interesting. It's a Doe Duo in the background. But uh, take a Wait, look what? at the. Yeah, well, it it's looks a, like another head over here on the road. No, uh, it's a mailbag, and there might be another uh, Doe Duo that looks similar to that. Take a take a good look at that, and uh, when we get to the other Doe Duo, we'll uh, compare. Indeed, indeed. All right, so let's go to the Doe Drio here. 90 HP, uh, really fierce-looking Doe Drio, actually. Oh, that's kind of cool. I exit out of it, dang it. <laughs> the ability is Retreat Aid. When this Pokemon is on your bench, your active Pokemon's retreat cost is two colorless energy less. So now you're making all of your Pokemon to retreat less. Now, I've heard that this is actually basically a reprint, like maybe not attack-wise, but uh, I've heard that uh, other Dodrio in the past have had that exact ability. I believe you're right. So uh, I'm not. I can't tell you which Dodrio they are. If you want to leave a comment uh, to tell us which Dodrio it is, by all means, go right ahead. But I'm sure uh, that uh, this ability probably stacks as well. So if you have two of them, you're retreating anything you want for free. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, it could definitely be used for uh, some of those uh, really big guys, like a uh, Whale Lord, for instance. Yep. So um, or Mammoth Swine. <laughs> <laughs> or or maybe it's fine. <laughs> so, oh, that's ridiculous. Definitely. Uh, I, I want to uh, point out one thing. I love how all three of the heads are just like different. One, uh, the one on the very right is super fierce. The one in the middle is very serious, and then the one uh, on the very left is just like really crazy. I wanted to say other words, <laughs> referring to guano or bat poop, uh, but uh, he he just looks psychotic. <laughs> uh, to uh, me, he kind of looks like he's spacing out. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and the other Dodrios just looking at him like, come on, man, focus. <laughs> but, uh, so, yep, that's what we got for him. So we've got uh, this Starly right here. He appears to also be in the nightclub, but just uh, flying above them. Oh, yes, indeed. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Anyways. Is that a clock in the background? Let me go back to it. Uh, I don't know. It just looks like a clock. I, no, it looks like a Ferris wheel. Okay, maybe. A call for flock. Search for the deck for any number of starly put them under your bench that's kind of cool if star raptor wasn't garbage um so uh i can just go through these guys real quick if you want unless you want to uh star ravia <laughs> garbage uh star raptor he the has powerful a powerful star raptor powerful star raptor that's useless in the tcg indeed i mean didn't he used to be good with level x but now he's uh he's been brought down to this this lowly so. card Yep, and that was the last Pokemon of the set. Uh, yeah. That's not full art. Um, but now we have our trainer cards. Indeed, we have a card that we were talking about earlier. A good way to get a out certain Pokemon that have heavy retreat cost. Haha, <laughs> heavy ball. Search mm -hmm. your deck for a Pokemon with a retreat cost of three or more. Reveal it and put it into your hand. Shuffle your deck afterwards. This has been missing for a while. We saw level ball come back and it just made sense that heavy ball would follow. Yep, and I'm really glad that it's back. It's going to make so many more decks playable. Uh, it can definitely help out um, the Mega Venusaur decks. I mean, Mega Venusaur had the uh, help of, um, what do you call it, Giant Plant Forest, but now it's easier to search him out. So very fantastic to get that Heavy Ball back. The only downside to Mega Venusaur still is no Spirit Link. Maybe them secret rare spirit links in the future. Who knows? I would not want a secret rare spot no. wasted on a spirit link. I'd rather just add it to the set. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'd rather have a stadium. Mm -hmm. I'd rather than bring back shiny Pokemon. Do it, Pokemon. Do it. Um, so uh, one thing to know about the artwork too, it's like you can actually see the heavy ball just like imprinting itself in the ground. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. Uh, next up, we have Assault Vest, which is a competitive TCG, uh, not TCG, competitive uh, VGC item. Um, it, the effects are kind of the same. Uh, Pokemon this card is attached to uh, 40 less damage from your Pokemon, uh, opponent's Pokemon that have any special energy cards attached to them. Uh, I think its effect in the game is uh, different in the sense of like uh, it raises special defense or uh, blocks something from special attacks. I don't know. It's something along the lines. I don't do VGC. Yeah, we're TCG, that often. so yeah. <laughs> but um, definitely cool. I mean, a lot of special energy is used into uh, block 40 damage. That's pretty impressive. Indeed. But you just have to have it in the right situations. Of course, we got our two spirit links. We got the Houndoom, and we've got the Mewtwo. May as well bring them up side by side here. Yep. And uh, Mewtwo is the same exact uh, spirit link in the other set. 
as well. Yep, it is the same. Uh, we got their supporter here, Giovanni's Plans, which is actually really cool. It gives you two options. You can either draw cards until you have five into your hand, or until the end of your turn, each of your Pokemon's attacks do 20 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. So you could choose to either get cards that you need, or you can do 20 more damage and treat it as an extra muscle band. Yeah, um, it's not the best card, unfortunately. Um, if that was draw until you had uh, six or seven, that would be better. Or if it was shuffle and draw five, but that would just basically be Shauna. Uh, but it's just uh, not that powerful enough. And uh, doing 20 extra damage, I don't think is worth a supporter spot. But it could be used in tight situations, but it really just depends. But uh, unfortunately, Giovanni's not that great of a card. Mm -mm. But... Um, it's good to see him and such a interesting mechanic. One thing that I want to know is that the English um, version of this card just says, choose one. Uh, it doesn't even say choose one of the following two effects or it anything. Choose one. It just says choose one. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. Because I guess uh, English people are just stupid and just need everything simplified. I Thanks, suppose. Japan. So uh, next up, uh, we've got Burning Energy, uh, which has that synergy with a lot of fire Pokemon, but, uh, you know, mainly for this set, uh, Mega Houndoom. Um, so we've got, uh, this card can only be attached to fire Pokemon, provides fi uh, fire energy only while it's attached to a fire Pokemon. If this card is discarded by an effect of an attack of the fire Pokemon it is attached to, reattach this card to that Pokemon from your discard pile after applying damage uh, and effects from the attack. Pretty that is cool. Yeah. I mean, it works well with Mega Houndoom. You can use it with Pyroar. You can use it with Charizard. If you Blaziken. play Charizard, you can use it for Blaziken. I mean, Blaziken, the Blaziken that I pulled like three or four of from Primal Clash, and I was like, oh, this is garbage. It's never going to see play. For two uh, fire energy, you discard uh, either one or two, and you do 100 damage. Now it's just like you get that back. So now it's actually a little bit more playable. Indeed. I probably still wouldn't play it. I hate that Blaziken. Yeah. All right, so let's run through the artworks here of the full arts. We've got Houndoom. the Houndoom and the Mega Houndoom. And the Houndoom is so amazing. He's just coming out of a spiral of fire. It's incredible. I feel like they could have done a slight better job on Mega Houndoom, but uh, I still love this out artwork so much. I love Mega Houndoom so much. He's just this gigantic demon dog. Fantastic. Uh, we got the Mewtwo EX, I think the better of the Mewtwo EX full arts uh, between the two sets. I would have to agree with you. And uh, then we have Mega Mewtwo EX. Uh, I really do like this one a lot. Uh, I may like the other one better, but uh, yeah. the colors on this is fantastic with the yellow and the orange. Um, it just really, really works well. It's a fantastic looking card. I like the color scheme, but I feel like they could have done more with Mega Mewtwo Y himself. Yeah, he, he's just kind of spreading those hands out, just yeah, like... He doesn't look very powerful. Yeah, but, uh, well, no, I think he, the stance kind of feels... Uh, I, I don't know, maybe it's just a personal thing. I think he uh, it feels like he's like about to do this just all-out attack, which Psychic Infinity would imply. But, um, Spirit bomb. <laughs> <laughs> yes. His hands aren't up, man. They're yeah. spread out. Uh, well, they're on their way up, maybe. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, we've got uh, Giovanni's plans, which uh, I made a very funny tweet with this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. Should I say it on the video? Oh, jeez. You know what? Go for it. <laughs> and when she asks how big the D is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I love it. The card is fantastic. I love it. And uh, it's just 20 minutes into... Uh, Team Rocket and chill. Give you this look. <laughs> oh, uh, man. Let's just move on to the secret rare. <laughs> and then oh, the secret man. rare Mewtwo EX. The better looking of the secret rares, in my opinion. But I think um, they picked the three wrong background Pokemon. Why yeah. Chestnut? Okay, he's got a break. Fine. But why Cresselia and why Magnezone? It just doesn't make sense. I just want to know, what are those? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Like, uh, to be honest... When you see this card getting pulled in a uh, video, it does look fantastic, I think. Uh, but I think that's just a gold border thing in that it is actually textured and not like looking like a sticker. Uh, but um, it's definitely the better looking of the two. Because, uh, I mean, come on, uh, you were obviously going to get spoiled with that. Uh, there's definitely a, another version of Mewtwo in Blue Shock Impact, whatever. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's just... Uh, why? I know it. 
All right, well, we are now halfway through the two sets. We're done with Red Flash. We're going to move on to Blue Impact here. Oh, my gosh. This is such <laughs> a big set. <laughs> no. All right, so you got a Pincer here. Um, Water Pokemon Master again, trying to be funny. Overhead Toss there, hit damage. Because Pincer can't aim, this attack does 20 damage to one of your benched Pokemon. One of your... So useless anyways. Yeah, sorry team. <laughs> Waiting for that. Ooh, what if they... I, I'm hoping for a Mega Pincer in uh, the next uh, TCG set. That would be pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, next up, we got uh, one of these uh, real-life claymation-type uh, Pokemon. We got Cacnea. He's pretty cool. And since there's not a Grass-type Cacturn, we got a Darkness-type Cacturn, which is pretty cool. Um, gross. Yep. And... Monkey grosser actually he kind of looks cool he's got that pompadour looking thing going on but i i still don't like you um <laughs> 20 minutes into monkey and chill <laughs> uh, 20 minutes into hansling and chill actually <laughs> oh geez hansling don't let's not give these people the oh, ammo geez. to work with so we got the one random chest spin thanks for that picking uh, berries Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to cover these guys or sure, not? Sure, why not? We got a okay. Scatterbug. Uh, Scatterbug, yeah. I mean, he's in a fall atmosphere. It's a fall uh, fall release set season type thing, so I guess that's fitting. Mm -hmm. We've but got then Spupa, he's uh, in winter. Spupa's in the winter, I guess <gasps> signifying the moon. Oh, I didn't even notice this. Look on the very left of him. Uh, some of the snowflakes are Pokeballs. Oh, yeah, they are. Wow, right there. That is, That's kind of cool. Yeah, that is kind of cool. I, I do like that. I like this artwork anyways, but now I like it more. Yeah, me too. That, that is neat. Uh, this is signifying, I guess, his transformation from fall into winter becoming the uh, Spupa. Um, okay. Uh, so I went to click on Vivian because uh, you were going to talk to him about him next. And, uh, oh. He opened up in a tab. Yeah. Indeed. That wasn't a mistake. So, okay. Uh. All right, well, I am in window capture, so you guys can't actually even see it. Um, but it does have 120 HP. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, the ability is energy color. You can only use this ability once during your turn. You may flip a coin. If hit, search your deck for a basic energy card and attach it to one of your Pokemon. Shuffle your deck afterwards. If you want to see the artwork and you're on my channel, go check out the video on 8 Box, and you can see it. Oh, yeah, I'll pull it up just uh, again because I exited out of it briefly. But there you go. Uh, very beautiful artwork. Um... Yeah, this time around they didn't do uh, the multiple uh, Vivians in the set, which uh, kind of sucks, but um, no matter. I'm glad. Uh, Makes it easier to complete the set. Yeah, I suppose. Well, well if you could call it easy. Yeah. Uh, so next up, uh, we've got uh, Cyndaquil. This artwork is so amazing. I love this Cyndaquil. Look <laughs> at him. He's so derpy looking. He's so great. Uh, and it's nice. Now it's a little too long. Yeah, it is pretty long. Now that you mention it, he looks uh, more like an ant eater. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's nice to see these uh, guys getting some love. Uh, this Quillava, um, I have seen. Uh, like, I mean, I've seen most of these cards in person because uh, by the time you guys actually see this on either of our channels, I'll have already opened up a box of each. So you'll probably, if you guys want to check out my videos, <laughs> um, don't well, do actually, it. It's a trap. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm talking to my <laughs> subscribers too. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Just so uh, the cards are uh, very cool looking, uh, like this Quillava. But then we've got this Typhlosion. Um, looks amazing, uh, and he's got massive eruption. Uh, only thing worth talking about. 80 times damage. Discard the top five cards from your deck, and it does 80 times the number of energy cards you discarded. Uh, basically, like uh, that heat more deck back in the day, but uh, a little the uh, uh, stupid phone. That was uh, you. Yep, I know. It was Fredo. <laughs> but um, dang it, Fredo. Dang it, Fredo. But um, yeah, it's not as good as the heat more back in the day, uh, just because heat more was a basic. But I think he did less damage times the number of energy discarded the old fiery licks attack yep but uh this one would be a lot harder to pull off a uh massive eruption so to speak because <laughs> he's uh stage two you would i mean getting that out with a, a deck that consists of like 30 something energy would just not really be that possible pre-release that's it <laughs> yeah <laughs> basically that's it Indeed. If, mm -hmm, all so. right so let's go on to Remoraid here. Ooh, it's, these guys are cool. It's a Remoraid. I mean, mm -hmm. Remoraid in and of itself is not that fantastic. Uh, what he evolves into doesn't make sense either, but hey, I'm not going to yeah, judge it. It's talking I guess. monsters. The one thing that I think is kind of weird is that the attack is just to switch this Pokemon with one of your benched Pokemon. 
Why would you even want to do that? You have to attach for that. Yeah, I'd rather attach and retreat manually, but whatever. Okay, so here's yeah. what really matters. We're going to look at this Octillery here that evolves from Remoraid. The abi mm -hmm. our ability is Abyss Hand. Once during your turn before you attack, you may draw cards until you have five. So essentially, this is a stage one, one card less Shaman. Meaning that if or you... Or a water type, one card more Electro. Yes. So if you're in the situation where you can't necessarily afford Shaman, you could go to this option. Not to mention, you can use it each turn, so it actually has a slight advantage over Shaman. Yeah, and it stacks. So essentially, uh, once during your turn, you can draw five cards, blow through those five cards, and draw again. Um, so I think the advantage that it has over Shaman, and being that it's a stage one, so they're not really too hard to get out, I definitely think this could maybe not necessarily see more play over Shaman, but I definitely think um, there are going to be a lot of people that use it over Shaman just because they can afford the space for it. Right. And the con uh, the consistency of being able to um, continuously draw until you have five cards. Yeah, it's one less card than Shaman, but I mean, I don't play Shaman that often, but how often do you actually scoop him back up and put him back down? Like, you know, I feel like once you get through your three or four Shaman or however many you're playing, uh, you may have a few more chances, but then you're done after that. Whereas this guy is every single turn. Right. So. Well, you can cover your ice balls if you want. <laughs> Not my ice balls. <laughs> um, so we've got uh, Glalie. Oh, oh ugh, come on. Here we go again. It's in another tab. Yeah, uh, that's weird. I, I should have just done monitor capture. Why did I not do monitor capture? I have no idea, unfortunately. But uh, so Glalie EX, um, he has a uh, ice breath, which is terrible. Is this our first EX actually? Yeah, it is. Of this, yeah, set, of this, yes. of this set, yeah. Uh, ice breath, flip a coin. If heads, uh, your opponent's active Pokemon's ter uh, paralyzed. Terrible. <laughs> but then we have instant cooling. 50 plus damage. If you have the same number of cards in your hand as your opponent, this attack does 100 more damage. Now, uh, a lot of people at first were thinking, well, not only is this card artwork not very good, but um, it's also a terrible card. But people forgot about Battle Reporter, which um, I believe... Uh, May, is that exact effect uh, drawn until you have the same number of cards in your hand as your opponent. But what happens if you have uh, more cards in your hand than your opponent? You can't draw until you have more cards mm -hmm. uh, or the same amount. But there's something that we'll be talking about at the very end of this. The That's very end. The very, very end. That will make Glalie EX very, very playable, especially combining him with... Um, uh, who is it? Empoleon could definitely make him even more playable, I think. It's possible. But um, then we have Mega, Mega Ice Ball. No. <laughs> Mega, Mega uh, eat everything on the card because there's not enough room for your giant mouth. <laughs> um, we got Cryong Mouth. <laughs> um, for, yes, a yes. for a water and two colorless, we got 100 plus damage. If there are 10 or more damage counters, originally when I read this uh, card, I thought it was uh, 10 or uh, more damage, but it's 10 or more damage counters. It will do 150 more. So you could potentially do 250, but you have to have 100 damage or more on him. With only 220 HP, that's just not really worth it. You're better off just using Glalie EX, but... Um, I mean, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, the idea of doing 250 damage for 3 energy is pretty incredible, but at the cost of having 100 damage on yourself, uh, it's just not very likely. Yeah, I mean, it could be useful in an emergency situation, I guess. Like, if it's about to die out, just be like, well, I might as well. Yep, go out with a bang. Yeah. All right, back to the monkeys again. We've got a pan pour here, which is actually kind of cute. I have to give it that. Uh, I, I've never liked semi pour at all. Well, we're on Panpour, though, right now, so Panpour is oh. kind of cute. He looks like he's actually in Italy in that little canal that runs around the city. I still don't like him. Uh, we also have Semi-Seer, uh, Green Toss, but three Grass Energy from your hand. Why are they all like their weaknesses? I don't <laughs> understand so. that. It doesn't make uh, sense. You know what? And the thing that really sucks about the monkeys is I really like them. When Black and White uh, originally came out, I was like, oh, man, different elemental monkeys to get like that. I, I thought that was really cool. But the TCG has made me hate these Pokemon. Mm -hmm. I have to agree. Uh. So we got Vanillite here as well. I'm just going to go ahead and go through that. We got the Ice Cream Cone, Floating mm -hmm. 
Yeah. That's and, that's and then we got a bigger ice cream cone. Bigger ice cream cone. And then we this got... Is, this is the double scoop. And then we got double <laughs> scoop and doo And now we've got the... Uh, oh, I clicked on vanilla again for whatever reason. And now we've got the triple cone by the looks of it. Uh, <laughs> uh, we got uh, vanillics here. None of them are any good. Uh, Shivering Press is kind of unique, I guess, in the way that uh, it does 30 damage until your next turn. In the player. way that it screws both of you over and there's no good outcome from it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> until the end of your next turn. So the next turn you play, you can't play supporters or stadiums. You're punishing yourself to do 30 damage and prevent your opponent from doing the same thing. It's just not good enough for me. Yeah. Uh, we got this other Magnemite, which is uh, kind of cool. Um, it has Glittering Guidance. Uh, the Pokemon's retreat cost is a colorless less for each Magnemite on your bench. So that's cool, I guess, if you never need to desperately retreat this Magnemite. It's a Lightning-type free floating bat from Plasma Storm. Mm -hmm. If you have another Magnemite on your bench. Indeed. Oh, why did I have that up? I had a picture of Gengar still up. Oops. Oh, my bad. Well, right. Oh, this is... Uh, Go for it. You said you wanted to. Uh, we can, he was my mascot. We can talk, both talk about him. Okay, fine. We got Ghastly here. He's Ghastly. He's this is a, an awesome looking card, by the way. Yeah, he's in the library. He's just chilling. He's looking he's like... G -g -g ghastly <laughs> uh, We've got this Haunter, which I thought was really interesting. He just looks kind of flat and plain compared to this, like, spooky background but mm. he's kind of cool uh he's got gothic fear once during your turn before your attack when you play the card uh this card from your hand to evolve one of your pokemon you may use this ability and both active pokemon are confused i don't know why that would be good at all yeah, but really, okay yeah i don't i don't get uh, either i mean if you want to pair it with machamp but that would be worse than <laughs> i don't know it's, it's just not a good ability yeah um but then the amazing, amazing Gengar. The best uh, looking Gengar I have ever seen printed. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, spoiler alert, I didn't get this hollow. Um, but uh, retreat cost, zero. Uh, and then uh, 130 HP, decent. Then uh, creep show for a psychic and a colorless. If your opponent's active Pokemon has at least three damage counters on it, that Pokemon is knocked out. There's no gimmicks they can get around with this. It's knocked out on that turn. You don't have to wait till next turn. It's just knocked out. Now, why don't you go ahead and explain your interesting theory in using this Gengar? Uh, the thing that I talked with you about? Yes. Okay, so basically, uh, you know, just use it with Gengar EX. Gengar EX has a um, colorless attack that allows you to... Um, put three damage counters anywhere on any of your opponent's Pokemon, and that's only one colorless, so you're going to run this with Dimension Valley no matter what. And that's a free placing the three damage counters, so you use him to set up, because he has 170 HP, so there's no need for using bats, because that would just be too slow and you'd have to evolve, whereas Gengar, you can just keep placing damage counters. And then when it's time for Gengar to come, uh, <laughs> the other Gengar to come out, uh, it only costs one energy, because you're using Dimension Valley, so uh, one Psychic Energy, and then he has, you know, all of them... Uh, well, all of the Pokemon that have three damage counters, if you really need to bring a certain one up, just Lysander them up and knock out. Oh, sorry about that. I was just yawning real quick. <laughs> um, the other attack is kind of cool, too. Ominous Fog. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now poison. Place one damage counter on each of your opponent's benched Pokemon. So not only are you uh, poisoning the active, but you're also dealing damage to each of their Pokemon. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, it, it's, it's really good. Uh, there's no gimmicks to it. It's just Bingo bango. Uh, that's the best uh, terminology I could find is uh, bingo bango. It's right. it's really good. It, it's incredibly good. And it's making, uh, I think Gengar EX decks will make a comeback because uh, we've lost uh, Sigilyph yep. and uh, some other Pokemon. But uh, Gengar Gengar decks. Could be. Could be. Look out, Look out for them. All right, so I'm going to cover the two other Mewtwo's. We got Mewtwo EX here, the worst of the two. The, uh, uh, the ugliest of yeah, all yep. of them. It's it's it, he looks too derpy in my opinion. Photon wave, 30 damage during your opponent's next turn. Any damage done to this Pokemon by attacks is reduced by 30 damage. And Psycho Burn for two Psychic and double colorless does 120 damage. That's more like the second attack of the other Mewtwo EX that we're used to seeing, and it's still just awful. 
Yeah, it's not good. You're not going to use this. No. So no. what we are going to look at next is the Mega Mewtwo EX, which is pretty neat. Uh, I like the way it looks. They should have made it fighting type, just saying. It should have been a fighting type. I'm a little disappointed in that. Vanishing Strike does 150 damage, and if there's a stadium card in play, it does 50 more damage. Uh, it's not affected by resistance or any other effects on the depend defending Pokemon, so you can do 200 damage. You also... Um, uh, have a little bit of help, I guess, if you use Dimension Valley, you can just do a Psychic and two Fighting. You could use Baby Landorus to accelerate the energy if you really wanted to. Uh, unfortunately, you don't I mean, have access if to you're gonna have, energy. But. If you're going to have fighting requirements, you know, it's kind of stupid that it's not a fighting type when that's the cool thing about Mega Mewtwo X is that he's a fighting type as well as a Psychic type, but hey, I guess I'm just an idiot. Yeah. I mean, you completely wiped out the possibility of using fi uh, strong energy or fighting stadium. It kind of sucks. Yeah, I mean, whatever. Let's yeah. just move on. <laughs> that, I mean, yeah, I, I still like it a lot, though. I, I, I still can see some playability, but just not as much as the other one. Of course, Y gets the favoritism. Thank you, Pokemon. Indeed. So we got uh, Woobat. I never really liked Woobat. His eye is creepy. And uh, we got Swoobat. He's like a pig bat demon. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't really look like a demon because he's all happy, but... Bat pig. I, <laughs> bat pig. I don't, I don't like you. <laughs> um, so uh, he's not good. Um, well, I don't like the next Pokemon, so you can just keep going. Uh, we got Elgium. He's uh, looking in the mirror because he's creepy. And uh, we got Bahiam. Cool artwork, but... Uh, garbage uh brain bullet does 20 damage times the number of energy attached to your opponent's active Does that say Pokemon. brain ballet no uh ballet b-a-l-l-e-t I, I think water pokemon master is just being a water <laughs> pokemon master because that should be brain bullet i believe i think it should too but uh who knows uh maybe some people got mistranslation because i mean you've ever get uh well, bullets confused with uh, dancing. Not to mention, U is nowhere near A on the keyboard. Mm, yeah, but you gotta think about like how it uh, is in Japanese, though. Yeah, I'm just saying if it was a typing mistake by Water Pokemon uh, Master. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just I think he's just playing jokes on us. I think yeah. he is too. All right, so that let's go water back. Tricky Pokemon Master. Indeed. Let's go back to see a Gen 1 Pokemon that we also have not seen in quite a while. I was actually hoping this guy, like uh, when I made my original guessing list, I was hoping these guys would get a uh, break card, but I'm still happy about Marowak. Yeah, I mean, it was still a Gen 1 fighting Pokemon that we haven't seen in quite a while, so mm. we got the Sancher here, really cool looking, digging a hole there. Uh, nothing special about it. And we also have Sand Slash. Sand Slash is not that impressive either. <laughs> <laughs> you ever just see like sand slash is so intimidating looking and he's just like looking at this flower he is yeah it's like oh. the the gentle spike ball <laughs> mm -hmm. so then we've got uh Meloetta, another nice hollow uh has excel spin uh to fight uh attach to fighting energy from your discard pile to this pokemon then switch uh this pokemon with one of your bench on uh nice type fi fighting Meloetta in its period form and then we got uh how do you pronounce that? Primorondo. Primorondo for fighting in two colorless, 60 plus damage, and it has any uh, psychic type energy attached. It uh, does 50 more damage, so it's not very good. Nope, not at all. But it's uh, cool looking. So let's jump sets here and uh, look at the, not jump sets, I should say, the jump types over to the Cacturn from Cacnea. This is a dark type when, of course, Cacnea is a grass type. Uh, nothing too special about it either. I mean, this should have been a hollow though. Even though it's a garbage card, it should have been a hollow. Right. It's so fantastic looking. It is a very cool looking card. Oh, it's really good looking in person. It's uh, the colors are a lot more vibrant than they show in the scans. Indeed. Well, I'm gonna continue here because this is yeah. this is this is channel mascot stuff yeah, here, guys. Yeah. I mean, I understand. I, I have to do it. I have to do it. N is. I've got to, I've got to, I've got to represent it here. So we got the Zorua here. Uh, Zora is definitely a much better looking card, I think, in this set. Um, just really cool looking. Like I don't know. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, I think he. I like it. I like it a lot. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, 
<laughs> we got a Zorak here. A Zorak's Amazing. ability. Yes. Oh my gosh, this card is freaking gorgeous. Uh, impersonate. Once during your turn before you attack, if this Pokemon is on your bench, you may switch it with your act opponents. Or yeah. you may switch it with your active Pokemon. Ugh, I'm too excited to talk. This is Keldeo. Mm -hmm. This is a Keldeo, and his attack is actually really cool too because it's an Absol. Mind Jack does 10 damage plus 30 more damage for each Pokemon on your opponent's bench. So you're combining two competitive Pokemon in the TCG and turning it into one card. That's really cool. Oh yeah, uh, I, I, and it looks fantastic too. It does, and you know even though um, Mind Jack doesn't do the same kind of thing that the previous uh, what was a brutal bash brutal bash does 20 times the number of dark pokemon it's very similar and i like the fact that they're keeping with damage due to the size of your bench or your mm. opponent's bench in this instance yeah. and then here's the best part we've got zorark break my favorite break card of the entire set um, I have to agree with that on this because it just looks really cool. And it's I my second favorite break. I do want to say that because Marowak and Zorowark are the only good ones, really. They, well, eh, Raichu. Oh, uh, well, I meant from these particular okay. sets. I got you. I got you. Yeah, Raichu's fantastic. Indeed. But we're getting to that later. Exactly. So we got Foul Play here for a single Darkness Energy, which I think is awesome. Uh, it used to be a double colorless on the pr uh, promo and the one in black and white, I believe. Yeah, which wasn't a big deal, but, uh, you know, you couldn't attack things such as, um, why am I drawing a blank, Aegislash and things that prevent special energy attackers. Exactly. So we've got Foul Play. Uh, you can choose one of your opponent's active Pokemon's attacks and use it as this attack. So it's kind of situational in a way, but with so many Pokemon that have overpowered attacks that can you know, deal tons and tons of damage, but require a lot of energy. Zora can do it for a single dark energy. And you have the added addition of 40 more HP when in the past you could only deal with 100 HP being on Zorak himself. So Yeah, the only downside to uh, things like Foul Play is that you have to rely on your opponent's active Pokemon like uh, like having an attack that can benefit from uh, that. Because if it's something like if you're going against a Mewtwo or something, or if it was something specific for your amount of energy, then you you know it doesn't really work out so well for you. Right. Um, but that's why um, breaks are really good in the sense of you get the attacks and abilities of the previous Pokemon, because then you can use Mind Jack. Yep, you can still have access to that. Can you imagine if you had Zora break and your opponent had a Robo Sub? <laughs> How would that? Uh, hmm. You couldn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> it would just be. Uh, that's. That would suck. That's all I can say. That's unfortunate. Now you'd have to use Mind Jack to knock out a Robo Sub, and nobody likes to do that. Oh yeah, no, not at all. But uh, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely my second favorite break cards, and these do look really fantastic in person. One thing that's disappointing is that the artwork is like it looks like shiny golden and whatever, but like it's just flat. Yeah. Um, the only thing shiny about the card is like the gold in the uh, background uh, throughout the card. It just has that uh, weird. Uh, hollow pattern um i wish they would have done something like uh if the zoroark was like glossy just the zoroark though <laughs> like that would have been oh, like they used the way they used to do shinings yeah but it's uh just flat which is a little disappointing but who knows maybe they'll uh do something more with that in the future who knows so uh next up we've got uh snubble uh, i think this is the first time we've seen them as a fairy type in tcg sets because i know we did get like the snubble mcdonald's promo or something um, like that i believe we got it in uh was it x and y or one of the or the x and y starter set it may have been the starter set yeah i believe it was starter set but uh set wise uh first uh instance of snubble and uh granbull spout uh showing off i said almost at spouting uh sporting their new fairy typing uh i love how granbull just looks tough i mean he should have been fairy fighting or something like that um but uh they're not good but they're cool mm-hmm Indeed, indeed. Uh, we got uh, Flip Baby here, and then uh, did you want to get the? Uh, did nope. you want to cover Go these ahead. ones? Go ahead. Okay, uh, so we got uh, uh, Floet. I almost said Flip Baby again, but uh, Aroma, uh, Aroma C'est La Vie. I think that's kind of an interesting attack name. That is. And then uh, Florgis so has that, that Floet goes back to the um, the. Um, oh, jeez, what was I trying to say? Um, it goes back to the fact that uh, Kalos is based off of France, so. Mm -hmm. And then also in the background on that uh, Flabebe, uh, I believe you can see no, it. Uh, wait, the Floet? I thought you were talking about the oh. 
Yeah. Oh, I thought. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, well, anyways, what are you talking about? Uh, well, you. Were, I thought you said Flabebe, so I went back to the artwork to take a look at it. And then, um, if you go to the Flabebe, uh, if you notice in the background, there's something uh, fighting in the sky. Could that be Mega Mewtwo, perhaps? It could be. I thought you were talking about Floet's background because you've got uh, uh, Meloetta and uh, Snubble back there. Oh, no, I uh, didn't even really pay attention, to be honest. Whoops. Okay, we just messed that all up. Let's just go to Florges already. Go. For yeah, it. Florges <laughs> is really cool. The ability, uh, I thought this was translated differently, but I guess not. Uh, relaxing scent. The attacks of each of your Pokemon is one fairy less. That's really cool. I thought it was if you had a fairy energy attached to your Pokemon, then it was one fairy less after that. But uh, apparently it's just uh, one fairy less in general. So going back to that Aroma Tisei, you can attack for free, basically, and get uh, them to do confusion damage for 60 on them for free, uh, which I think is pretty cool. Um, but uh, yeah, this can definitely be useful for other things, such as uh, Xerneas uh, EX with the attack breakthrough. Huh, what a Hello. nice shout out to the future. They were so original with naming our set. Yeah. Um, so, but no, this could definitely be useful for things like even Mega Gardevoir, but I mean, you probably don't really want to use it on Mega Gardevoir since you need to have more fairy energy to attack. But I, well, I guess that's across all Pokemon though. So you can just attach the fairy energy amongst your benched and only attack with a double colorless. So who knows? Um, Anyways, uh, yeah, there's just a lot of possibilities. Uh, this will definitely uh, help out a lot of, um, what do you call them, uh, a lot of fairy-type Pokemon in the future. And uh, then our last break for the Japanese sets, but when we get to our sets, uh, we got two more breaks. Uh, Florgeous break, uh, useless. Uh, it only has an ability, which is interesting. Once during your turn before your attack, you may heal 30 damage from your active Pokemon and remove one special condition from it. Not worth it at all. Nope, not a bit. Not even a little. But it looks cool. Yeah, it does. All right, so let's go into the Xerneas here. Uh, Xerneas has a couple of interesting kinds of attacks. Uh, Rainbow Force, 10 damage, and does 30 more for each type of your benched Pokemon. So if you ran a lot of different types of Pokemon, you could do a bit of damage, I suppose. Uh, 150 mm -hmm. up to 160, unless you play Skyfield. Yeah. It would be for a fairy and a double colorless. And, of course, we also have power creation as well for two fairy and two colorless. Does 80 damage, and if it recovered any HP during Ooh. your turn, it does 80 more. Interesting kind of wording on that. Recovered instead of healed? Yeah, yeah. if it yeah. recovered any HP. That is kind of an interesting translation there, but uh, the fact of the matter is, is that there's really no healing for fairy types, uh, or at least, well... And not yet, but there will be a card in the future that will come back to help the fairy types. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's worthwhile at all. What card are you talking about? Are, are we covering it? The reprint. Are we talking about it later? Uh, actually, no. It's in the Golduck deck. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I guess. It's Max oh. Potion, guys. Oh, yeah, that's right. That is... <laughs> Correct. Yeah, we got a Max Potion being reprinted in the Golduck uh, break deck. So, mm -hmm. All right, we got Axew here, another Axew. And now we're actually going to see the evolutionary line here with Fracture up next. Uh, I, I, I accidentally called this Pokemon Haxure. Haxure? When I was, well, because I was thinking of Haxorus and I thought it was Haxure, but no, it's uh, Fracture, like a uh, fractured leg that I'm going to get for people attacking me for calling it <laughs> Haxure. <laughs> All right, well, let's move on here to Haxorus. Haxorus is actually really interesting. Um, the first attack is Dragon Dance. Each of Haxorus's attacks do 100 more damage. This effect continues until this Pokemon leaves play. Not that it leaves the active position, but leaves play. And you can't apply this effect to this Pokemon more than once at a time. Yeah, so you can't double Dragon Dance, unlike in the VGC. Exactly. So but, you, uh, each of these attacks are going to do 100 more damage, so Sharp Fang can turn into 160, and Dragon Pulse can turn into 230 damage. I mean, for even Sharp Fang to do 160 and then 180 with a Muscle Band, that's good. You can't deny that's... I mean, say what you want about Stage 2s. They're slow, but they're not unplayable. They're just slower. Attacks like that is what makes Stage 2s worth... Uh, uh, evolving into basically <laughs> yeah 
And um, of course, all you got to do is slap on a double dragon and you're able to do all of the attacks. Yeah, 230 damage, 250 with a muscle band, and all you have to do is discard three cards from your deck. That's, it, it's good. Yeah. It's, I don't care what anyone says, it's good. Indeed. But people probably won't try to play it, unfortunately, but I might. So oh, look shoot. out for that. Hey, there's that Dodo you were talking mm -hmm. about. And look at that. It's uh, running with that mailbag. <laughs> so okay. that, that's where that artwork comes from. It still almost looks like a third head if you look at it real quickly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it does. Uh, so it, it's uh, really weird. Um, it has its attack name in there. Uh, uh, well, first of all, the first attack, Synchro Stab. Just stab. Uh, interesting. Uh, but Doduo's Flight. Draw two cards. Hmm. Interesting. So, oh, did you want to cover these guys? Um, don't, but did you just, uh, oh, no, you keep going. Oh, okay. I mean, I don't care either way. Nah, go ahead. Uh, we got Hoodoo. Uh, Hoodoo's kind of cool looking. He looks uh, bigger than he should. Like, he yeah. Looks, like, more he, like a balloon. Yeah, he's kind of fat looking. Uh, but we've got uh, Noctowl. Very, very good card here. Basically, the turn of the Vileguard decks. We've got... Um, Sky high for two colorless. Twenty times damage. Both players reveal their hands. If this uh, this attack does twenty damage times the number of item cards in both players' hands, uh, very Not similar just thing. Just one what? Not just one, but both. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now uh, the thing was uh, back in the day uh, di during Diamond and Pearl was um, uh, Vile Plume had a very similar um, uh, like it was the same ability name, but it was for uh, supporter. Uh, and trainer cards and I believe stadiums as well um, and then Gengar did uh, like it was like a psychic and a colorless and did like a certain amount of damage for uh, trainer cards I believed uh, but you know it, it was just an annoying deck and uh, it was really good and now it's making a return with Noctowl except it's a stage one with a double colorless yeah it's uh, for only item cards but you know you run that with Vileplume and you can't play item cards from for either of you guys so it can add up in a hurry that is for sure it, it's really good yeah, I think it's really really good and this is definitely going to come back and you're going to see this being played I promise you you will see this played a lot it's definitely got the potential to hit for lots of damage and not necessarily take a whole lot to do, but uh, it's a matter of just how lucky you can get that you and your opponent both draw item cards. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to move on here. we got Teddy Ursa. Roll around for 30 damage. Just to Originally, I thought that uh, Hat was a flying saucer. Oh, but, shoot. <laughs> uh, I thought it was, but uh, it is a hat. It is indeed. And we got an Ursa ring here. Uh, really heavy energy costs for not much of a result <laughs> yeah another thing that i was hoping was that uh earth ring break would have been a thing but uh oh well nope maybe in the future uh, nope. maybe an earth ring ex maybe <laughs> maybe all right so we're gonna go smeargle here next smeargle has a, a, a kind of a weird ability with recoding once during your turn before you attack you may switch one basic energy card attached to your active with one different type of basic energy in your discard pile don't. When could that ever be useful? I really don't know. That's weird. But the thing is, too, um, we should just look out for later sets because there are a lot of cards that are weird at first, and then yeah, um, they make more sense yeah. later on. Keep an eye on this one, that's for sure. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't know. So that was the last of the uh, Pokemon. So now we're moving into our trainer cards. And... Uh, Hello, my old friend Floatstone is back. This, uh, the Pokemon this card is attached to has no retreat cost. Very Amazing. cool to see this back. Love Floatstone. Very happy to see it back. Thank you for coming back, Floatstone. Um, we got our Spirit Links. We got a Mega Chomp. Yep, and we got the Mewtwo. Mm -hmm. Same exact one. Not, not different artwork, just same thing. Yep, and we got Bridget here as well. Search your deck for one basic Pokemon EX or up to three basic Pokemon excluding Pokemon EX and put them onto the bench. Shuffle your deck afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is definitely, definitely really cool. Um, the thing is, since you played onto your bench, you cannot play uh, Hoopa and then search for uh, three Pokemon EX because you're playing it onto your bench rather than uh, Scoundrel Ring being activated when you play it from your hand. So Pokemon did something right for once without having to make a uh, 
errata for the ruling on it. Um, but this could have some synergy with that uh, Xerneas uh, searching for three basic Pokemon. You could just have a bunch of basic Pokemon of different types uh, and just have them all crowded up on your bench. I uh, suppose you could. Yeah, so... I mean, that's one useful thing that you could have for it, but Bridget, I think, is actually a useful supporter. All right, we also have Parallel City here. Uh, this is a very unique stadium card. The top effect, with the top text upside down, this player, the player this side of the card is facing can only have three benched Pokemon. Hurting them Mega Rayquaza decks. That hurts that. It hurts a lot of things, actually. Mm -hmm. um, the bottom effect, the text right side up, the player this side of the card is facing... Uh, fire, water, and grass Pokemon attacks do 20 less damage. So you can choose which effect that you want to have on you and which, which effect you'll have on your opponent. Uh, I guess most of the time, you're probably going to want to do the three bench Pokemon to your opponent, but I don't know. I mean, I don't see the bottom side being that great. I don't yeah. think well, it's going to be The there. way that I've always saw it was that... Um, it's a positive and negative for Mega Rayquaza specifically. Um, you limit them to having three bench Pokemon, which hurts um, regular uh, colorless Mega Rayquaza. But then um, if you have Fire, Water, or Grass, it does 20 less damage. But Dragon Ma Rega Mayquaza, uh, Mega Rayquaza already has Delta Wild that uh, reduces Fire, Water, Grass, and Lightning by 20. So basically it's hurting you if you run fire water and grass type pokemon in your deck and you attack with them you would be doing 40 less damage to a dragon type mega rayquaza that's the way that i always um saw it like basically that's the correlation i made with it is that, that yeah it hurts one mega rayquaza but makes another stronger if they happen to happen yep and we also got the reprint of rainbow energy as well which is a uh, cool but also disappointing because it didn't get different artwork and uh, we did not see a water energy this time around, but they're obviously saving that for Rage of the Broken Sky. So, um, yeah, definitely we'll wait for it. Yeah. Um, I, I also want to say it here that I think it's going to be called something along the lines of wave energy and it's probably going to be when you attach it does spread damage to your opponent's Pokemon, probably 10 to each of your opponent's Pokemon. I want to call it now. So I seem like a genius. Let's or, see if you get it right. Or a psychic. And then finally, we can move into the full arts. Uh, we got Glalie EX. Um, I thought this EX looked really, really cool. Just for being a Glalie. It's slightly plain, but then what, what, what can you really do with a floating ice ball? Yeah, but I mean, he covers up a lot of the card, though. So I think it's really cool because it's just up in your face. Yep, you got your SAG TCG EX. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we got that Shiny Hunter's Act EX. <laughs> and then we got the Mega Glalie, which is currently eating the Mega Evolution rule because so it doesn't you need it. Yep, so you don't have to play Spirit Link as long as you are um, using the full art. <laughs> um, cry on mouth for the win. Indeed. Oh, then man. we've got uh, Mewtwo EX, which he still looks cool, but not as cool as the Red Flash one. I agree. And then, honestly, one of the best-looking full arts that they ruined. <laughs> that they ruined. <laughs> Mega Mewtwo X EX full art. It was such an amazing-looking full art. And then you see Vanishing Strike. <laughs> Not vanishing, vanishing. The good news is that they are actually correcting this error in the second printing, so the first edition will always be an error. Mm -hmm. But, uh... Not first edition, uh, uh, unlimited printing, I guess you would call it, will have it corrected. But, I mean, when you're so focused on making Mewtwo that you have to have 10 Mewtwo cards, and then you're just like, eh, well, we messed up. It's, come on. Yep. Vanishing, vanish, <coughs> vanishing, vanishing Strike should say 150 damage plus 10 to yourself for being an idiot and leaving out the H. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and then we have uh, Bridget Bay. Hey, 10 minutes in the Poke Bank and chill, and she gives you this look. <laughs> um, they're getting a lot more risque with these cards. She's got yeah. them curves. She's got them everything. Yes. And of uh, course, you got the Skyla that you're supposed to be getting when you buy two boxes, but Americans don't get it even when we order from Japan. Yeah, because it's specific to getting them from Pokemon Center uh, in Japan. And even if AmiAmi does order from them, uh, which they probably just order from a distributor. 
unfortunately. No Skylas for us. I mean, could you imagine how uh, amazing uh, Wake Run Collapse would be right now? He would have 20 of those. Those are selling for 22 online. He would have uh, about like over $400 worth of Skyla Full Arts. That would pay for a lot of those boxes. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, wow. But uh, yeah, the Bridget, uh, like I said, for a card game for being for six years old and older, that Bridget Full Art is pretty risque, but hey, I'm not really complaining because I'm not six. Exactly. So, um, and then our final card, technically, of these sets, but we still have a few more, so don't uh, don't get relaxed just yet. Don't touch it's, that dial. Yes, we've got the uh, Blue Impact Shock Mega Mute, not Mega. Damn it. Uh, Mewtwo. It's, Mewtwo, it's, it's the secret rare for us. Again, Zorak makes sense, but why Haxorus and why Meloetta? I, I don't understand it. I, I don't get I, it. This seriously, just take two quarters, go to uh, like machine in a Chinese buffet, and see if this does not look like one of the stickers or tattoos that you would get. Pretty much. I promise you. Just, just do it, please. Find a Chinese buffet, get two quarters, push it in, pull it out, you'll get the cardboard thing, you open it up, and you'll see this card. <laughs> what are those? <laughs> let's just move on past it, and let's go to the Raichu <sighs> deck here. We yeah, got the Pikachu. Gonna... Yeah, we got Pikachu. Uh, Pikachu's uh, sitting in a field. Yeah, he, okay. he is a f- mouse. Let's talk about something that could be slightly competitive here. Raichu, I think, is actually really cool for a lightning and a colorless energy thunder judgment does 50 damage to each not just one each of your opponent's pokemon ex and don't apply weakness and resistance for bench pokemon and that's good that's amazing now could you technically pair that up with a muscle band to do 70 only to the active ah okay if your if your opponent's active is an ex you can do 70 damage Mm, okay, gotcha. But uh, yeah, that's really good for and just for aligning the color list. That's excellent. It really is. And zero retreat. Indeed. Yeah. Um. No retreat at all. And we got the Raichu break as well. 130 HP. Still a little on the weak side on HP. But then again, Raichu was never meant to be a bulky Pokemon. Right. Grand Bolt. 170 damage. Grand F Bolt. Grand F Bolt. <laughs> <laughs> discard all energy attached to this Pokemon. With 170 uh, damage. 170 damage. It could be like a last ditch kind of attack. I think Thunder Judgment is probably a better attack to use most of the time. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's powerful. Very, very powerful. 170. You combine that with a Muscle Band, that's 190. And all you have to do is discard a Lightning and a Double Colorless. But, I mean, with uh, the power of Magnezone, you can yeah. get uh, more energy attached to it. And then with some other cards uh, that are being reprinted, you can get energy back uh, more easily as well. So mm-hmm. uh, we'll take a look at that in a second. Uh, we got this Stun Fist here, uh, ugly as usual. But he's got Revenge, 20-plus uh, damage if any Pokemon was knocked out. It, uh, on seen your last turn. Flash fire. Mm-hmm. Uh, it does 80 more damage. That's pretty powerful for a stun fisk. You would yeah. never expect a stun fisk to be powerful. Well, then again, we did see the uh, the stun fisk from Legendary Treasures uh, actually see a little bit of play as a Nani X Landorus doing 20 to the active, 20 to the bench. Oh yeah, that so is that right. Something. But revenge is something we haven't seen since Drudigan from Flash Fire. So. That's a thing, and then of course we had Terrakian before that. So it seems like every few sets we'll we'll see our revenge Pokemon. Yeah, and that is this one right here. Mm-hmm. And then uh, now we're getting into some oh, just one trainer card, I guess. Uh, friendly Rescue, uh, garbage card. It, it looks neat. I mean, look at those little robot hands. They're grabbing Pokeballs. So uh, they're trading the, Pokemon. Yeah, it, actually, like the CG looks like original like base set CG. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I think that's why I like how the card looks, but both players choose one Pokemon in the discard pile and put it into their hand. Your opponent picks first. I don't see why that would ever be useful. but yeah, uh, Or why it would matter who really picked first anyways. Yeah, so, um, yeah. Uh, moving on, we've got uh, Noibat. This is from the Noivern break deck. Mm-hmm. He's a Noibat. And uh, Noivern. Uh, we got tuning. Shuffle your deck into your hand, then draw a number of cards equal to your... Uh, equal to the number of cards in your opponent's hand and then uh air slash for a psychic darkness and colorless 120 damage discard and energy attached to this pokemon not very good at all nope not a bit but uh noivern break uh i Terrible. definitely i think he's decent <laughs> um 
With uh, Synchro Wolfer, 70 plus damage, if the number of cards in your hand and your opponents are the same, this attack does 80 more damage. Again, combine that with Battle Reporter or a card that we'll be talking about shortly. Um, there are potential ways to make it happen. 150 damage, attach a muscle band, that's 170. Uh, I, and essentially, you don't, like I said, you don't have to use the Noivern, so you can use the Noivern from. Was it Flashfire? Did we uh, confirm that? I don't think we actually even talked about it, come to think of it. <laughs> it, it was either Noivern from Flashfire or Furious Fist, one of those two. I think it was Furious Fist, actually, now that I think about it. Yes. Uh, it has the uh, ability um, Echolocation, Echolocation that uh, allows you to uh, make your opponent uh, flip a coin when they attack, and if it's tails, uh, damage doesn't get done. So I think when if you combine it with that Noivern, it's good. It can be, but again, we're playing in a game of consistency, and yeah, there are ways to get your hand size down to your opponents, uh, yeah. but even then, it's not going to be consistent. Yeah, but I, I do like him. I do think he's cool. All right, so I'll talk about the final cards here. We've got Chatot here. Chatot is just a Chatot. Looks kind of cute, but mm -hmm. he's I never... Love Chatot. Yeah, he's not any uh, any importance, really. Reserve ticket, you may flip a coin. If head, search your deck for any card, shuffle the rest of your deck, and then put the chosen card on top so you can draw into it the next turn. It's not good, though, when you have to flip a coin and then you can intentionally uh, get your uh, deck like, reshuffled. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, I unfortunately, I don't have a way to pull up the next cards because they're going to go to a separate link. But if you want to see the actual card printings themselves, you can check it out on uh, Andrew's channel over there. But Town Map, uh, you may flip over your prize cards to reveal what is actually underneath. Uh, that that way you, you know what's in your prizes, so to speak. Um, then, of course, we have Judge. Judge is the card we were talking about. Go for yes. it. Yes. Uh, judge uh, allows you, uh, or makes both uh, players, I was thinking of a word. Anyways, both players uh, shuffle their hands into their deck and draw four. Now, four is not very powerful, but Judge is powerful in the sense of it makes your opponents have the same amount of cards as you do, and vice versa, which is where um, it beats out Battle Reporter um, for the attacks that require you to have the same amount of um uh, card so you know Glalie um, and uh, who were we just talking about Noivern Break uh, benefit a lot from Judge they do uh, Fisherman you can search your discard pile for four well, not search but you get four basic energy cards out of your discard pile and put them into your hand again mm -hmm. can't that's pull a card why, up from that yeah and uh, that's why he is a supporter um, because you're getting four energy into your hand but that definitely has some synergy with uh, Raichu Yep. Or any Pokemon that discards, really. And then, lastly, we've got Super Rod being reprinted. That is amazing, um, by the way. I, I cannot wait to replace anything that has Sacred Ash and puts uh, Super Rod back in. Indeed. You can get uh, any combination up to three of Pokemon or Basic Energy or Mix mm -hmm. and Match, whatever you want to do. Yeah, it's really, really good. Um, another card that it doesn't show, obviously, that will be reprinted in our set, and there will be probably a few more XY promos that we're not getting as promos, but we're getting put in our set, um, obviously, to fill in some gaps here and there. Um, we're getting a Skyla reprinted, probably, most likely, but we will not be getting the full art because the English description says that we'll only have two full art trainers. But I'm a, basically what they're doing is like what they did with Steven. Steven was in the Mega Rayquaza battle deck and we got Steven in Roaring Skies, but we did not get the Steven full art until Ancient Origins. So I'm assuming, um, like I said, so it's not 100% confirmed, but it practically is that uh, we will be getting a Skylar reprint in our uh, breakthrough set, but we will not be getting the full art until whatever Rage of the Broken Sky is. So Let's hope. Let's hope. Yeah. All right, guys. So that is it for our set review. We have covered a lot of cards. If mm -hmm. you've hung in this long, we appreciate you guys hanging in, and hopefully the information we've given you is something that you can use and that you enjoyed this video. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, uh, yeah, I mean, he pretty much said what I would also say. So I'm just going to pull up some cards so you guys have something to look at while we're uh, wrapping things up here. And, of course, on my end, I can't pull those cards up. So, hey, whatever, it's all good. Well, no, you can pull up the uh, cards like that we've been going through this whole time, though. I suppose. You know what? I'm just going to leave up the Zoroark and the Zoroark break because they're the coolest looking and my favorite cards of the set. So we're just going to go like that. 
Alright guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, whether you're watching on my channel or if you're watching on 8BitBock. Either way, be sure to like the video and of course, comment down below what your thoughts on the set are. We definitely would like to hear what you guys think of Breakthrough, what you're anticipating, what you're looking forward to. Let us know down below. And of course, if you're on my channel, go check out 8BitBock's channel and if you're on his channel, come subscribe to me. <laughs> yes, I'm, I I was going to get to that, but now you just sound arrogant. Yes, I'm I do. Kidding. I know. No, I'm just <laughs> but, kidding. It's okay. But no, well, no, you don't have to be kidding. But uh, yes, yeah, so uh, uh, as uh, Professor K was saying uh, to my subscribers, uh, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like. Um, to everyone, if you're not subscribed to either of us uh, and you happen to be coming across one of these videos, uh, please subscribe to us because, well, you know, we make that A1 content. Not and to mention I, that we do the set review every time a set comes out we always do them together so that's something mm -hmm. you can look forward to we always will cover a set even if it's not exactly early <laughs> yeah um so you know uh you know like i said guys go over to professor k's channel but i'm sure most of you guys already are but if the slim chance that you're not do it because he makes some excellent content as well as n he's not here with us because he he never is here with us on the um set reviews well sometimes he's chimed in every once in a while it's but, a little uh, hard because i've got a headset and you can't hear what's going yeah, on so it's a little but, bit confusing but yeah those two guys got that a1 content as well so be sure to go subscribe to them and check them out if you haven't already um is there anything else we need to say no i think that we pretty much covered everything we've been on here for well over an hour now by i'm sure <laughs> yeah I, i'm i'm sweating i need to turn this fan back on Indeed. And as a matter of fact i need to go to the bathroom so yeah Let's just uh, wrap this up here and say we appreciate you guys hanging in here this long and hopefully you enjoyed everything. And we yep. will see you guys next time with another set review when we collaborate together, if not sooner. So definitely yep. uh, stay tuned for more TCG content. And we'll see you guys next time for the Pokemon Evolutionaries. I'm Professor K. And from 8 Bok, I am Andrew. And you all have a wonderful day. Yep. I mean, I ended that awkwardly, but we're keeping this part in now. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye.